have we had such a heightened tension on the Korean Peninsula? Not since the Korean War. Security and diplomatic issues were top of the agenda in a televised debate by South Korea's two main presidential candidates on Tuesday. China, meanwhile, has launched its first domestically built aircraft carrier. It comes amid rising tensions over North Korea and worries about Beijing's assertiveness in the South China Sea. It's another legal blow to the controversial immigration policies of Donald Trump. The U.S. judge has blocked an executive order that would cut federal funds to so-called sanctuary cities, areas where local policies protect undocumented migrants. New York and Los Angeles are among the jurisdictions. The Justice Department is expected to appeal the ruling. Meanwhile, the threat of a government shutdown appears to be fading. Trump has backed away from a demand that Congress include funding for a border war with Mexico in a spending bill. Democrats have threatened to pull support for the bill if such money was included. But Trump is not giving up on his wall plan. The wall's going to get built, and the wall is going to stop drugs, and it's going to stop a lot of people from coming in that shouldn't be here, and it's going to have a huge effect on human trafficking, which is a tremendous problem in this world, a problem that nobody talks about, but it's a problem that's probably worse than any time in the history of this world. Mexico's foreign minister said on Tuesday that his government considered the building of the wall a hostile act. And he repeated that his country would contribute nothing towards it. But Donald Trump still insists that Mexico will ultimately foot the bill. Amid tension between Israel and Germany over Berlin's criticism of settlement building in the West Bank, there's a new diplomatic flare-up. The Israeli Prime Minister cancelled talks with the visiting German Foreign Minister in a protest over meetings he had with NGOs critical of Israel's treatment of Palestinians. <laughs> Netanyahu said, I'm leading Israel's foreign relations to an unprecedented flourishing state. But I do so through proud nationalist policies and not by bowing our heads and groveling. Our relations with Germany are strong and important, and they will continue to be so, he says. The German foreign minister had earlier said it would be a remarkable event if Netanyahu were to cancel their meeting. I regret it greatly, he says. And I'll say it openly, we can't become a political football for Israeli domestic politics. But it's not a catastrophe. There'll be another occasion to meet somewhere. When you come here, one has to know that you're not immune to surprises, he says. Gabriel did go on to meet the Israeli president, however, with both men saying they were committed to relations between their two countries.